Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks, Josh. Hey, you guys want to stand? We're going to start off with some worship. We did this song uh, last week. It's called Jesus, and uh, that's why we're here. That's why we come on Sunday mornings to celebrate him and what he's doing uh, in our lives and in our church. Um, so let's sing this list together. King of all creation, set aside his crown, servant to the Father's love, descended from his throne. You give me grace and mercy, I give you control. 
chains and ready to live Sing it! Like a river light in a dry land Like a flicker sight to a blind man I saw the glory slide as it broke in God of mercy and life Oh, you brought me back to life You're the Lord of life Shining in the dark You're the source of life Beating in my heart You're the risen hope You're the risen Christ You restore my soul Oh, you brought me back to life Amen. If you guys want to have a seat really quickly. Good morning. It's good to see you guys. We're so excited that you're here. Welcome kids in the big service too. Can I get a shout out from all the kids? Yay. We're glad to have you guys. It'll be an awesome day today. If you could turn your attention to your connection card in your uh, bulletin. And if you're new here and you want us to know that you're new here, you can fill that out and put it into the offering plate later or in the back there's a place to drop it in. Um, and if you need any information, we'd be happy to get that to you. In addition, if you have been coming for a while and you call Whitewater your home, we are having a Whitewater membership meeting um, the 22nd and the 29th. And so in order to succeed in loving the community, we really need a committed team of people who consider Whitewater their home and are all in in their time, talents, treasure, and testimonies. So if you are interested in that, you can fill out the card um, and we'll get you specific information about that. Again, that'll be the 22nd and the 29th of June. Two more announcements. So, who loves summer? Raise your hand if you love summer. Yes, it's an awesome time. So next week we are gonna be taking a break from our First Corinthians study and we're gonna be starting a four week series called Summer of Party. And we're going to go into the summer, um, we're going to really focus on rest and relationship. And so we're really going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer to do that. And then the third one, today is an exciting day because we're doing baptisms. So that is awesome. And if you have been feeling God pressing on your heart, maybe today is the day for you as well. So if, even if you haven't made that decision prior to this, you're still welcome to get baptized. Um, a note on the baptisms, we just have nursery uh, today, and you can go down to the baptisms. will be outside of the steps, just on the, where you came in. So that's where the baptisms are going to be. But you can go view that first. Most of the kids are in here. And then go get your kids after the baptisms. So a piece of logistical information. Again, we're so glad you're here. Um, happy Sunday, and we'll continue worshiping. So if you guys want to stand. Who's excited for the summer of party? I'm so pumped for summer party. It's going to be the best. All right, let's keep worshiping. Yeah. Oh, we're just going to have a moment up here. All right, now we're ready. <laughs> Sing, what can wash away? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow.
righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Lord, we come and we just thank you, God, that you first loved us, that you sent your son to die on a cross to pay the price for our sins. And we just pray that this morning you'd speak to us as we celebrate baptism, we celebrate you bringing us from death to life. I just pray that you'd be glorified this morning um, and that we would just have a good time. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and grab a seat. Welcome. Good morning, Whitewater. Good to see you. Hey, um, today is a really special day. We've got a, a little bit of feedback and people in the house. There we go. Hey, um, it's so cool to have kids and whole families in here. It's, this is one of my favorite days. Baptism is one of my favorite days, and I just want to talk about why that is. Uh, before I do that, though, I just want to welcome anybody who's new to Whitewater. Um, Whitewater exists for the community. Uh, the way our church started was actually through starting parties. So when we talk about having a summer of party, that's how our church started, was doing block parties, inviting uh, friends and neighbors uh, who might never have known each other into like a big party and just getting to know people and show God's love through that. And I will tell you, there's been some of the coolest, craziest stories. I see a few friends out in the congregation today that I met before they knew Jesus at a block party, at an event like that. So God really uses that in our church. And um, we've seen many of those people get baptized too. And uh, so... Today we're going to have basically uh, just about five, ten minutes from me. I'm not going to share too long. We, wanna, we really want to put the focus on hearing stories of how God has transformed uh, people in our church and people who are going to be getting baptized today. Does that sound cool? So bapti- baptism is one of my favorite, favorite things. And uh, this is why. When I was eight years old, um, I was d- just like going crazy on my parents. My dad's a pastor. Uh, I was raised in the church, and I was going crazy on my dad. I just asked him, hey, dad, I want to get baptized. Dad, I want to get baptized. How many of you guys have had kids that are a little bit like that? They're like, I want to get baptized. Okay, I was a little weird then. Maybe there's one or two more out here. Okay, there's a few. But I just want to get baptized so bad. My parents, for a few years, been like, no, George, you're not ready. You have to really understand what it means. And I'd be like, well, what does, it, what does it mean? They're like, you tell me. I was like, it means that you're following Jesus, and you love him, and and, and, and you're living your life for him. I knew that when I was eight. I was a pastor's kid, you know. Jesus, God, Bible, tell your friends about it. That was always the answer. And, um, but, I, but I knew. I, I just, I wanted to get baptized. There's something in my heart, something almost uh, intangible. I couldn't completely explain it, except that it felt like God was telling me, you get baptized. And I remember talking to my dad for, for a couple of years. And then finally, when I was about eight years old, going on nine, I came to him into his office, and I was like, I really want to get baptized. And my dad's like, well, let's, let's sit down and talk about it again. So we started talking about it, and, you know, talked about, you know, what Jesus meant to me and why I wanted to get baptized and what it was all about. And, and um, my dad was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do this. And we got this tiny little church in Southern California called Calvary Baptist Church. I mean, tiny. It had this little courtyard that was, like, as big as our little, you know, front foyer thing out here. And kids would just play there. It was just packed, and we'd have, we'd have potlucks together. And it was just this, this small family when it first started out, and it grew from there. But I remember getting baptized, uh, and my whole family came, my grandparents and my cousins, and it was this big event. And um, I remember when I got, like, it was my turn to come out. And ba- back then, like in the 80s, they, yeah, in the type of church we were part of, you had to wear, like, this big white robe. And mine was like, the, you know, for like a six foot five man. And I was eight years old or nine years old. And this thing was just draped all the way to the ground. And I, I looked probably like an ethereal little ghost walking out, pale skin. And I walked down into the water. And I remember just looking out at everybody. And I was kind of freaked out. And then all of a sudden, these things started running through my mind. Should I have done this? Like, you know, am I really ready? You know, that all of my, my grandparents, my grandpa's this, you know, strong man of faith, loves the Lord. I'm like, I'm nowhere near where he is and you know, spiritual stature. That guy's an amazing man. Even at eight years old, I was just intimidated. 
And then my dad just looked at me. He's like, hey, son, I'm so happy. This is, the, this is the right thing. You love Jesus. You're following God. And just like alleviated all the anxiety and fear, you know. And then my dad went through kind of a few questions so the crowd could hear my faith and then baptized me. It was awesome. I just loved it. And it, it, uh, baptism itself, I just want to tell you what it means. Just three quick things. Three quick things, and we're going to go into stories. We've got some awesome people here that are going to share their stories with you. So the three things at baptism, about baptism you need to know. Uh, the first thing I want to read from uh, Matthew, chapter 28, is this commandment from Jesus, the resurrected Lord, Savior of the world, the guy who's died for the sins of the world, who's come back to the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, he comes and talks to his disciples, and he, um, he charges them. He gives them a strong mission statement. And this is what it is. In verse 18, Jesus came and told his disciples. Disciples means followers or, or learners. And it says this, I have, given, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the God we worship. He's three in one. It's like we can't even wrap our minds fully around it. But God is incomprehensible but knowable. He's just huge, but he's also close. And there's this paradox to who God is. And the God that we worship, Jesus, says, hey, you're going to baptize people. You're going to immerse people in that God. You're going to say, man, you're going to die to your old sins and come to new life, the resurrected life that I've provided for you. And I want you to make other disciples who do that. So teach these new disciples who you baptize to obey all the commandments I have given you. Get, teach them to love me. Teach them to follow me. Teach them to live their lives and shape everything in their life and put it all around the center of, of God. Have their whole life revolve around that. And teach them to obey all the command, commandments I've given you and be sure of this. I love this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God is with us. Baptism, if you didn't know it, is a sign that God is with us, that God is com committed to us, and we're saying we're committed to you. Publicly, I'm going to show that I have died to the old life, and I've been resurrected to new life. My sins have been forgiven. My life has changed. Well, there was a moment in my life where I was going this way, and my life was about these things, and I was struggling with this stuff, and then God broke into my life in this crazy way, this crazy story, and everyone has their own story. We all arrive at the same destination, at the foot of the cross, but we've all got a different way of getting there. We're all on a spiritual journey, and there's no one story that's better than another or worse than another, but we all get there, and when we do, we worship God, and we're changed, and that man or that woman that was going this way all of a sudden encounters God, and when we fall to our knees or when we're, we, we break down or when we just make that decision in our minds and our hearts we stand up we get up and we're a different man we're a different woman amen that's what baptism is it shows the commitment um of god to us and us to him and uh, in a lot of ways it's it's like a wedding ring i was talking with some friends this week it's like a a wedding ring on the day i got married sarah and i had committed to loving each other for life being together for life. And remember in the ceremony, uh, my dad was actually doing it. He baptized me and married me. And my dad's pretty involved in my life, which is a cool thing. I've appreciated it. But he said, yeah, hey, George, you can, you can put the ring on your bride's finger. I remember taking the ring and putting it on hers. And then Sarah took this ring that I've got, and she popped it onto my finger. And there's nothing magical about this ring. It's, it's not like, uh, you know, the one ring that rules them all or anything like that. Uh, but it's, it's a symbol of what's gone on in our hearts. It's a symbol of what's gone, gone on in our hearts. That God has changed me, uh, and, and because he's changed me, he's given me love, I'm going to commit that kind of love to my wife. And this symbol, um, I, I carry around with me all the time to remind me, to let others know, like, man, my heart belongs to Sarah. Like, I'm committed. And... Um, that's, baptism's a lot like that. It's the symbolic, it's this outward expression of what God has done in here. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism isn't this magical thing that's done over you and the waters or this holy water and then all you get up and everything's fixed in your life or, or whatever. It, it, it's, it's a sign, an outward sign of what God has done. It's like a ring. And one of the things I wanted to encourage a few of you, I remember being intimidated, you know, when I was getting baptized. I remember talking with people as I've been a pastor who were intimidated and were like, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I, I don't feel like my life is in line 
to be worthy to be baptized. And I'll ask them, but have you made a commitment to, to Christ? Have you started following Jesus? Oh, yeah, totally. Well, how come you, are not, you don't want to get baptized? I got to be... I got to be worthy of it. And I want you to know, um, my wife is a sweet wife. And she didn't put me on probation for six months after the wedding ceremony uh, for me to have to wait to give her a ring. I gave her the ring then as a promise of how we were going to grow in our life together. I didn't have to become more perfect, more worthy, so that I could put this ring in. I didn't do that to her. I didn't say, okay, hey, nine months for you before you give me a ring because I want to make sure this thing really works out, okay? You know, like... Uh, you know, some kind of fire insurance or something. No, like you give the ring right, right off the bat. I want to encourage those of you who have felt God pulling and tugging on your heart toward baptism, toward that next step of saying, I'm all in for him. I'm all in with you, God. And, that's, and there's been this, I'm not worthy. I, I'm, I mess up still. I just, I need to know more Bible. All these reasons, all these checklists in your mind that are keeping you from being baptized. It just isn't the case. We've been forgiven at the foot of the cross by Jesus. And, and we see uh, in Acts, let me read this to you guys. You pull up Acts real quick, um, chapter 2. Um, well, I'll just pull it up in my, my Bible if we don't got it. I love this. Uh, so, oh, here we go. Peter's words pierced their hearts. Peter was preaching the gospel, telling them about God's forgiveness in Christ. And it pierced their hearts. It, like, cut them to the core of who they, of who they were. And they said to him, all these people who were gathered in the temple courts, they said to him, uh, and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. Stop going this way, start going God's way. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. They're following his commandment. Go make disciples. Baptize them in the Trinitarian three-in-one God. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Keep going. This promise is to you and to your children, even to the Gentiles. All who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time and strongly urged all his listeners, save yourself from this wicked and crooked generation. And those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000. They didn't wait around for like five years to feel worthy to get baptized. They were baptized because they knew that God's grace and forgiveness was now. It wasn't just in the future. God doesn't just love some future version of yourself. He loves you now. I remember when I played football for the first time in high school. I'd never played in middle school or anything like that. And I got in line. They were giving the pads out. They were giving the helmets out. They were giving the, the uniform out. I remember coach giving it to me. Gave me the pads. Gave me everything. It was all a little droopy on me because I was really skinny. I was quick but, and, but really skinny. And he said, all right, now get out on the field and go hit somebody. And I was like, what? Like, I can't go hit someone. He's like, yeah, you're on the football team. That's what we do. We hit people. Here's your pads. Here's your jersey. You're on the team. I'm like, but I don't feel like I'm on the team. Shouldn't I have to, like, sign some kind of waiver? Can I, like, sit out a few days, wait a little bit, look, and then at my own, you know, pace, decide to tackle and be on the team? It's like, no, your, your parents signed you up. You're mine. Get out there. And I remember putting on my shoulder pads, going out, and just hitting someone as hard as I could for the first time. And it looked a lot like this. Boom. And I just, like, was taken over, and the guy ran over me and got a touchdown. But I made contact. And the reality is when we're baptized, it's also the outward sign that we're on the team, that we've got a mission, that we've got to get in the game. Jesus got baptized, and it signified the start of his ministry. When we're baptized, it's a reminder that we can always look back to. Say, we have to be in the game. I get to be a part of the mission of God. I get to love people and help them see the goodness and forgiveness of God so they can know God. So we get to help lead people to Jesus. Baptism's the symbol. It's the, the thing in our minds that says, that's the jersey. That's the football pad. That's the ring. You've, got, you've been forgiven. You've been empowered. You've got ministry. Let's get going. Let's work with God. That's the God we serve, everyone. And I want us to know it. So if you're out there and you know you've, God's been calling you to get baptized, today's the day. Why not do it? I want you to hear a few stories of, of really cool people at Whitewater that have um, made decisions for Christ. Um, so um, the Dennerts, would you guys come up really, really quickly? Um, the Dennerts aren't getting baptized. I've actually had the privilege of um, getting to know Mitch and Katie over the last few years. And, and uh, Mitch came to know Christ here at Whitewater and through some of the community groups. And he'll share a little bit about that. But um, I got to be a part of the baptism, and they've already been baptized, but I wanted them to just share their story, because um, this is a lot of, like, the stories that we have at Whitewater. So, um, Mitch, why don't you go ahead and just share a little bit uh, about your guy's story? 
Yeah, um, so we've been baptized for a while now, uh, but before that, I just wanted to kind of talk about how my life has changed since um, joining the family here at Whitewater. Uh, before I, you know, worked on the road, I was gone all the time, uh, missed a lot of, you know, some of my kids growing up, uh, you know, the early stages, um, just wasn't for me, and it, it just, something in my heart was telling me I needed to be at home, uh, I guess I don't know that it, I thought it was God at that point, but today I think it, it, it was, um, my wife started going to community groups, uh, without me, I was on the road, obviously, and I got super jealous, and you know, I wanted to be a part of it. So, you know, all these doors just kept opening up for me to, you know, come home and be at home with the kids and it worked out. So I started going to the, these community groups and getting involved and um, just really finding just great relationships with people and, and just realizing how awesome these people were. Uh, the story was great. The story of God, that's what we were going through and just got super excited, super into it. And, um, then, uh, you know, after that, I decided to start coming to church, met with uh, George. You know, I thought it was pretty odd. My first day, the pastor coming up to me and talking to me and singling me out, and I'm just like, oh, whoa, like this is uh, a little different than what I'm used to, but okay. So we ended up, you know, going and uh, getting some breakfast and, and just meeting and talking, and it was, uh, it was really nice, and he just kind of um, explained to me how easy it was to be a part of the family. Um, and we met a couple times, and I just really decided to put my faith into, into the Lord and, and uh, just, you know, go through the open doors that he kept placing in front of me. And, you know, ever since, I've had nothing but um, my best friendships in my life today um, are all basically from this church. Uh, yeah, all my best friends and my career today is from this church. I mean, I don't think I would be where I am today without this church. I've met everyone. You know, my livelihood, all that is basically been from God and this family. So um, just super important. I feel like everybody should get out there and, uh, you know, make relationships and just, you know, follow Christ with everything you got. Let my wife, let my wife talk here too. So a more current update was um, when I think of faith, I think of a faucet and it can be gushing with water, just flowing out of it or it can be dripping. In the last nine months, we've gone through a lot of trials as a family, so it was just kind of dripping, and we got way too comfortable with it just dripping. And we weren't going to church every Sunday. It was, oh, lazy Sunday. We're just going to hang out as a family at home. And then my husband and I looked at each other. We were like, what are we doing? How God's still blessing us, and we haven't put all of our faith in God in the last nine months, and he's still coming through for us like crazy no matter if it's gushing with water or if it's just dripping. And he's always there for us. And so we kind of looked at each other and we go, we need to go back to church. And we jumped full blown right back in. And no matter with it just dripping, and now we're gushing with water, God accepted us back in. He never turned his back on us. He's blessed us with so many different amazing things. And he accepts us for our sins even after we're baptized, we're not perfect, and he knows that, and he loves us so much, and I thank God every day for sacrificing his only son on the cross for all of us and for our sins, so if God's tugging on your heart, jump in the water because he's just waiting for you. Thank you guys so much. Give him a hand. Oh, should I talk about softball real quick? Yeah. Mitch has a really important announcement, too. Yeah, real quick. Uh, I'm going to be uh, coaching a all-men's softball team this year. It's going to start here pretty quick. If you want to play, please come see me. Um, I'll get your info, and, you know, we'll do some uh, men bonding, I guess, if that's not too weird. It's painful with Mitch. Yeah. I'm just telling hey, you. It, it is. It, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be super fun, so if you want to play, just please come see me, okay? It's awesome. Thank you, guys. I was like, Mitch, you want to share your story? He's like, yes, I'm so excited about that. But can I also talk about, you know, some softball? I said, of course you can. We're at Whitewater. That's what we do. Um, see, hey, uh, Aaron, would you, would you uh, mind coming on up? Uh, everybody, this is Aaron. You want to give him a hand as he comes up? There you there go. go. So why don't you just share us, uh, with us a little bit. Uh, Aaron's going to be getting baptized today. Um, why don't you just share a little bit about, you know, what went into that decision, what God has done in your heart? Uh, recently um well I grew up in the church 
and um, I don't know, my story isn't really that impactful, I don't think, but uh, I've, <laughs> I've always considered myself a Christian, and I've always considered myself, you know, walking with the Lord, but I was kind of the type of person that just would go to church, and it was like an obligation, and, you know, it, it just felt like a chore, and um, ever since I started coming to Whitewater, things started happening, and, and, and I started to grow, and I've made some good relationships out here, you know, and, and uh, I started going to a community group, and I think that's when it really kind of uh, struck a chord with me. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, you also found uh, the, the, the lady of your dreams, too, while you are here, right? That yeah. That's pretty good. Can't forget that. My wife, actually, is the one that uh, brought me to Whitewater. Yeah. I... No, dude, that's all right. That's all right. I, I want you guys to know uh, Aaron has a huge heart. One of the coolest things is to see him jump in both feet. Uh, I think sometimes we can relate to kind of, like Katie was saying, having the faucet just kind of dripping. Our faith is just kind of on cruise control or non-existent, or maybe it's like come to a complete stop. I don't know where you're at, uh, and you feel like you got one foot in, one foot out. And uh, when I first met Aaron, you know, he was a little hesitant, like he was saying with church. He was kind of like, hmm, I don't know about this. And just to see the transformation in your life and the, and the gentleness that's come in, the commitment to leading your family, commitment to loving your wife and, and kids, it's just been phenomenal. And so I just want you guys to know that I, I, you got to get to know this guy. It's, it's an unbelievable what God has been doing in his life. There's just been so much fruit uh, growing in your life. So I'm just real proud of you and excited for you, man. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> so get your hand. He's a good hugger, too, because he, like, engulfs you. Like, it's like a grizzly bear. Just like, ah. So, um, Colton, did you come on up here? Yeah, guys, give Colton a hand. Um, Colton's, really quickly, uh, one of those guys that you got to love. You don't mess with him because he's, a, 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 I guess, a dead-eye a shooter. He's in sports competitions. And, um, and his name's Colton, too, so that he, also He's building it up a lot more than it really is. I've heard, of, uh, I've heard of Montana. He's from Montana. He's fought bears. I'm just telling you guys. Don't mess with him. <laughs> that part's true. <laughs> so, um, Cole, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what God's been doing in your heart? Well, um, let's see. The, the end of September. Well, all right. So, that's annoying. Um, <laughs> when I was really, really little, uh, my family uh, took, uh, my grandma said, you know, Son, you need to baptize your children. My dad was like, whoa, okay, I'll do it. So took me down to Florida. That's where she lived. Uh, had me baptized. I was really young, four or five years old. Didn't know what it was, you know, brought up as a Christian, you know, went to church, did the Sunday school thing. Thought it was great. I was like, I love God. God's cool. He's there for me when I want him, but whatever. Um, you know, tried to go to, uh, so I met Maggie, um, I don't know, four years ago, something like that, long time, and uh, <laughs> she she grew up, uh, uh, you know, a Christian and stuff, and, and was, was way into it and thought... She can shoot too, you know. Yeah, she does, she does that. She does that. I like her a lot. You're great, hon. Um, please don't shoot me. Um, so she, she moved up from Boise to go to school in Missoula, Montana. That's where I live. Um, she said, you know, we should start going to church. I thought, great, cool. Yeah, I can do that. I've done that before. So we tried looking for a church in Missoula. Never really anything that great. Nothing fit us good. Everything was the, uh, if you've heard George talk about the, the fence, the fences and wells, uh, it was definitely a big fence based community. Um, it was hard to get in. It was just so big and overpowering. You never got to know anyone really. Um, it was, it was tough. Um, she graduated college, started looking for a job, found a job working for a company that works for Boeing. Thought, all right, cool. We'll move out here. Don't know anything about it. We'll just give it a try. Don't know anyone. Uh, moved out here and, uh, yeah, didn't, didn't know anyone. Just thought, all right, cool. Well, let's fall back on what we know, and that's drinking at the bar because we're from Montana, and that's what you do. So we... Went to uh, the Ale House, if you guys have ever been there, Puyallup River. It's fantastic endorsement. 
Um, they're <laughs> down on Meridian. I'm there all the time. If you need someone to go with, find me. Um, <laughs> it's great. Um, it's sweet. only soda water, kids. Yes, just so it is. you know. <laughs> well, they've, they've got soda and stuff, dude. They got hot dogs. Everyone likes hot dogs. Um, so we cruised, uh, we cruised down there and, uh, you know, went to go get a pint and uh, heard these two folks uh, talking smack about Montana. It's, this was in, in the winter. Winter here is nothing. Don't complain about it. You have it good. Uh, you know, complaining about uh, Montana and how cold it is. And, and we thought, oh, all right, that's not cool. We're going to confront them about it. Granted, this was cold. It was the coldest place in the United States at the time. It was like negative 30. It was pretty chilly. Um, so we thought, okay, we'll talk to him. So we scoot down the bar to him, and it was uh, uh, Michael and Kenny Rabb. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're sitting there talking to the bartender and uh, talking smack. And so we're saying, hey, 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 Montana's great. We're from there. Don't test us. So we uh, start visiting with them and, and, you know, thought, hey, these people are really cool, you know. And they, they brought up uh, Whitewater. And I said, are right, you guys Christians? We're like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we, we like to think so. I said, you know, come join us at, uh, at Whitewater. It's awesome. You know, lots of really neat people. So we came um, and uh, totally became a part of the uh, belong before you believe world. Uh, we got involved with, with friends from here. Um, or we, we made a lot of friends. Only friends we have. They're fantastic. Um, you know, got a lot of friends, uh, really got to, to uh, feel like we belonged. And uh, then my faith started to develop a lot. You know, it just it, it grew exponentially. Um, became from, yeah, I like God, you know, and, and now it's uh, I, I can't live without him. I got to mm. have him in my life all the mm. time. Um, he's, you know, so amazing and has changed my life. And, and it's just like the Jersey thing. It's like now I, I always was the... From when I was baptized, I was the water boy. I'm on the team, but I'm not really that important on the team. Mm. Everyone likes me. I'll give you water. But now I've, now I've got a jersey. You know, I'm out there and I'm on the field, and everyone loves that you're on the field. Everyone wanted you on there the whole time, but you finally said, hey, I'll get off the bench and I'll go do it. So getting baptized today is the, you know, give me my jersey. I'm ready. Mm. That's awesome, man. Give me my hand. And God is at work. Um, I just want you guys to know that everything we do around here is so that people can get connected with each other and with the living God. People can know God's love. They can know forgiveness. They can know heart change. They can know life change. That's what we do. Um, uh, we're going we're gonna to worship. Um, we're going to have just two more songs, and we're going to go out and do the baptism. And I just want um, parents, if you've got kiddos here, if you might even have a few kids in the uh, nursery today, um, go ahead and leave the kids in the nursery as we go out uh, to, the, to the front of the church, uh, the front steps. We've got the baptismal. It's a big, awesome horse trough. That's how we do it around here, um, you know, because we have a lot of, I guess, wilderness Montanan type people. Um, but uh, go out there, and then after the baptism, you can go pick up um, your, your kiddo from, from the nursery. But uh, thank you guys for being here. It's such an honor to be a part of a community where God is at work. And uh, I hope you guys would, would uh, just get to know some of these people. Just encourage them. Uh, if you've never met them before, just go shake their hand and, and let them know, like, just how maybe their story uh, impacted you. And uh, I just want to encourage anybody who's been looking in, who's been looking in wanting to make a decision for Christ. Make a decision like, oh, God, I feel like God's real, one. I feel like I can trust him. You know, uh, the scriptures say that um, everyone falls short of the glory of God. Everyone falls short of God's standard. But Christ came in and lived up to the standard for you and me. He actually died for you and me. And because it was so difficult and harsh and Jesus took the beating and the, and the disgrace and he took all the hell that we deserve, uh, it actually is as easy as a conversation to say, hey, God, would you forgive me? I want to follow you with, with all my life. That's as easy as it is. And if that's what you want to do today, I would just encourage you to do that. Just have a conversation with him. Mitch, when I was talking with Mitch about faith, I said, hey, we could talk to the Lord together right now, or you could go somewhere else and, and, and just have a moment with the Lord where you ask him into your life. And Mitch was like, I want to do it on my own. I was like, okay. So he drove off to a park or something and, and received Christ in his life. And um, 
And it's as easy as that. So I want to make sure that you, you know that. Um, we, have a, we might have a few others that get baptized. With a, there are some schedule things going on. Um, and if uh, hopefully next, in the next two weeks, we'll hear their stories as well. So um, if you would, just stand with me. We're going to go into worship. We're also going to be taking an offering together. But go ahead and stand and, and sing, and then uh, we're going to get some baptisms on. Uh, go ahead and bow your head, and I'm going to pray. And Father God, we love you. We're so thankful for you. Uh, we want to just follow you with everything we got. Lord, thank you that your love is real. Thank you that these stories aren't just, um, they're not just in a book somewhere. It's not fictional. Lord, this is, this is your power at work in real time, God. And we just pray that we would be more aware of what you're doing, that we would be more uh, receptive to what you're doing. Lord, help us to move from our plans into your plans. Help us to encourage one another. Help us to be a true community of, of the Holy Spirit where people can belong before they believe, where they can find acceptance and, instead of rejection, where they can find change, Lord, and they can have the strength to change in the people you want them to be. God, thank you for changing us at Whitewater. We love you. Amen. All right, let's sing together. I've become my own captivity Fighting for things I thought would set me free But there's a love so deep I cannot break free With flesh and blood You purchased me So that I might live so that I might go free from all the things that I've done and all the lies I believe because you won't let me go
jealous of me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy And all of the sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory As I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. You see, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. And oh, how he ready to go dunk some people? Woo. Hey, we're going to head out. Kids, kids in the room, you guys were awesome today. Can we give it up for the kids? You guys were in the big, get big service, and you were so great and hung in there with us. Hey, we're going to head out the doors. We're going to go down the stairs, out to the steps. Anyone who tries to escape will be sprayed with water. Just kidding. No, we'll head right down there. Um, we'll take about five minutes, and then we'll, we'll start the baptisms then.